So now we're going to look at slightly more complex examples. And this is all in preparation for being able to discuss the general case next week. So here's the idea. If we have a matrix A, and we multiply it times B in order to get to the identity, then we know something about the columns of B. What is it that we know about the columns of B? Well, if we partition B into its columns, and, when that, and we then multiply that by A, then we know that we, all we need to do is multiply the individual columns of B by that matrix A. But we also know that we then want to end up with the identity matrix, and notice that the columns of the identity matrix are just the unit basis vectors. So now we can go and say, ah, typical column on the left must equal a typical column on the right, and therefore A times the jth column of the inverse of A must equal to the jth unit basis vector. And since we know how to solve AX equals to B, we can set our right-hand side B to the jth unit basis vector and solve for the jth column of, matrix A, uh, of the inverse of matrix A. So that's going to be our strategy, but let's first update our list of equivalent statements. I need to correct this right here. That should be A inverse times A. And notice that if AX equals the jth unit basis vector has a solution for all of the unit basis vectors, then you can compute the columns of an inverse matrix, and therefore the inverse matrix must exist. OK, so let's start by looking at a 2 by 2 lower triangular matrix. What might be its inverse? Well, go and do the homework, and then I will see you in the next video.